Hi there and welcome to a show I like to call Game Changer. It's a chance for me to jump into your safe on Football Manager and offer some suggestions. Um, I'm not here to change the way you play or your tactic. Um, sometimes it's about training, sometimes it's about finances, setting a team up, scouting. I've done all kinds of episodes on Game Changers, so not everyone is the same. And this episode is interesting because it's all about team instructions. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification button to stay in touch for more videos like this. So here we have his save with Swansea. He's just started the season out and I've, I'll be playing matches against Leicester, Aston Villa, Norwich and Crystal Palace. Um, he's had a pretty decent season. Uh, he started the season pretty well, scoring, uh, beating um, Chelsea 1-0. But however, he had this little problem against Fulham, Liverpool, Sheffield United and Crystal Palace. Just certain things about the game didn't seem too right with me. When you're an underdog side, chances are you probably need to adapt your system once in a while because the AI is always going to be tweaking things. They expect to beat you and if they don't do it after a certain time, they will go more attacking and they'll change a few roles. This in effect can displace your own system. So what you need to do in games is to try and understand how your own team instructions are affecting your play, especially against systems that might have attacking wingers down the flanks. For newly promoted sides, sometimes having more players back when you're attacking a set piece is also a wise option. Here was too easy for them to carve you up. This was a match you played against Liverpool. You played reasonably well. You had a good share of possession. Unfortunately for your team, your ability to defend set pieces is a bit questionable. And sometimes against better sides, uh, it's going to be tougher. So there were some tweaks that I think you needed to make in your set piece instructions. But sometimes there's only so much you can do against a really good team who are definitely better than you. I would recommend incorporating defensive shape and set piece defending into your weekly routines when you face big clubs like this. It was this match that suggested that you needed to address one fundamental area of your game. It's the use of team instructions and understanding what to do if you certain things don't go your way. The, in this match, you picked up a yellow card fairly early. However, you were not doing anything about it because I didn't notice any tactical, major tactical changes to your system. Whenever I get a yellow card, I'm always worried about the flank that I get the yellow card on because that flank is going to get weak. And you have to pay attention specifically to players on that flank, whether they have the right attributes, whether there are any players on that flank that have low bravery. You could be playing with an aggressive role in that area. So picking up a yellow card on that flank can be extremely dangerous. These are things that we have to pay attention to. Once your player picked up the yellow card, they leveled the game soon after. You may have scored another goal to put you back in contention, but you could have done a bit more in this game. When you're an underdog, sometimes you need to have a strategy for certain formations that you might face. I tend to find that to be quite an easy way to approach the game. When you're a good side, you don't need to worry. You can apply the same principles when you're a good side. I mean, against certain teams that might be sitting back and defending, what can you do to extract a goal from that match? Sometimes, all it takes is a small change to your team instructions. So let's take a look at this tactic you're using. Now, this is a fairly aggressive, in fact, it's a very aggressive tactic. It uses a higher defensive line with a higher line of engagement and a prevention goalkeeper distribution to put a lot of pressure on the opposition. And he's also trying to entice them to attack you down the flanks. So you're going to draw a lot of teams down the flanks. So if you, it was designed with a good team in mind. And he's also using the overlap and the underlap instruction for his players. And it's going to positionally affect the two fullbacks who are going to be further up the pitch. He's using passing directness of a, of a very short length. And it's trying to encourage very quick passing as well with the higher tempo. Now, the challenge is when you see hit early crosses with pass into space, naturally this tactic was meant to be attacking teams who are giving up space. And it's good against certain kinds of teams that might give you a lot of space. But here the challenge is this, you're, you're fairly wide width. Um, then we've got to think about prevention or goalkeeper distribution. Then finally, we've got to look at your tactic and consider all these things into in perspective. This tactic is already playing with a 
with a split block. It's got players up top with a split block. Now, when it's used by a very good team, it's going to apply a lot of pressure on them. However, when it's used by an average team, we have to ask ourselves a question. Do we want to use prevent shot goalkeeper distribution? Because prevent shot goalkeeper distribution is going to encourage your players to close down their keeper by adjusting their formation, somewhat opening space up. Now, the other thing that we have to ask ourselves is this. They're playing fairly wide, which is basically... It's going to be set to the team mentality, which is positive. So generally, you will take, you will see the team playing a bit wider with better uh, playing the ball out to wider areas. However, using much shorter passing. Now, this could be, will force the ball to gravitate more with your central players. However, um, when these players get the ball, they will be trying to, they'll be further up the pitch. And sometimes you may not be able to find them with passes. So some of these players may not be able to find them with passes. On top of that, the reason why he's using the overlap and the underlap is to encourage the fullbacks to become part of the midfield and attacking transition. This is an extremely attacking tactic. So how would we use this with our team? So with Swansea, it becomes a challenge because you have to understand your players then. So here we have our players. Let's take a look at Selena. Selena... The moment I looked at Selena, I went, oh oh. Because he's got six for bravery, five for tackling, and eight for positioning. He doesn't have a lot of strength. Right? So this this player is basically a very nippy player that's gonna score you a lot of goals. However, he's not gonna come back and help the ball winning midfielder. And worse still, if this player starts picking up cards, or this player starts picking up cards, this entire flame becomes vulnerable because this player can't be relied upon. Then we have this flank over here. We've got Peterson. Peterson has some decent bravery. He will try and help you um, win the ball back. He's going to try and defend as much as possible whenever he gets the opportunity. And then we've got Thierry Randall Correra. Now, this player has is pretty interesting because he is very young. He loves to get forward. He tries tricks. He's got fantastic acceleration. He is going to arrive in dangerous areas in and around the box if you're attacking with him. It's a fantastic option to have. However, you have to remember that this guy is going to bomb forward. This guy is not going to help you defend. This puts a lot of pressure on your DLP. Your DLP is going to have to try and help the defense out. The good thing about using these two players together, I like the fact that you've got two players who can easily change positions. So whenever the ball-winning midfielder picks up a card, this guy can swap with him. So this is an option that you can utilize in the game. I was utilizing it a lot when I started playing the game on my, you know, when I had to take the game for a few saves. So this is something that you have to bear in mind. What I would recommend is changing this role because in my matches, I actually went to change his duty and I also had to drop the width, remove the pass into space, remove the underlap from this player or rather that instruction, remove prevent shot goalkeeper distribution. It was this defensive line, I would adapt it for matches. Here we have to recognize the fact that the defensive line is something that is not, it, it can be a weapon in the game because I use it to set my traps up. So I'm always looking to win the second ball. If I don't win the second ball, if my defensive, my defenders are too far away to win the second ball, I move my defensive line higher. So long as I know that when the transition fails or attacks break down, my players are not caught right, in having to track back and make tackles from behind. The other thing is this. When you play against a 4-1-2-3, and if you need to, you can actually change your defensive width, which I didn't see you do. Now, here... This is one example of a situation where you might need to not play on narrow defensive width because of the, uh, the quality of your players. Because Selena is not going to come back and help you defend, Grimes picks up yellow cards. What are you going to do about this player? This player is going to be drawing and picking up yellow cards. So what, you, what we need to do is we need to change the defensive width. So your defensive width can be pushed up narrow. You don't have to go very wide, but you can go up to narrow. And this will encourage him to come up and help out your side midfielders who go and close down earlier.
For our match against Leicester, we changed our we changed the tactic. We went fairly narrow. We played shorter with this tempo. We removed the overlap instruction. We hurly crosses. We maintained all this. We removed prevent shot goalkeeper distribution during the course of the game, and I played on narrow. However, there was a specific reason why I did this. Against Leicester, we've got the twin towers of Giroud and Vardy. So how do you think this system is going to be dangerous? It's going to have these two players to thank. So what do we do? We show them all the love in the world by pressing them hard. This means the moment they get into our half, we have a lot of love to hand them. The match was a good match. We managed to staff the strikers of service and also managed to score a decent goal. Here you can see we're keeping the ball pretty well. Our system is still fairly wide in the attacking transition, but the players aren't too far away. They are able to win the second ball because our defensive line is set up correctly and we create a very good chance by carving the opponents out. In our next match, we were up against Aston Villa. Aston Villa have got this player called Trezeguet in the team. He's playing, he's got a preferred foot of right and he was playing on the left flank. He's fast, he can dribble, he's got fantastic agility and balance. Both of their wingers were fast. So what the first thing that we did in this game was we drew, uh, moved our defensive width to the middle, which is one notch, right? And then... The second thing that we did was we also dropped our defensive line. We decided to go with the standard defensive line. Now, because we are now more expensive, I removed prevention or goalkeeper distribution because we already are quite expensive. There's a big gap between our defensive line and our line of engagement. The final thing that I did was apply opposition instructions. For this guy, I gave him a lot of love. Pressing intensity, hard tackling, and show on the wrong foot. And we doubled up. The same thing on Nathaniel Klein and uh, M Target, both your fullbacks. We basically told our players to give them pressing intensity more. The moment those players will enter our half, we know that our I know that my players are gonna put pressure on them. So essentially we've already got the split block in operation. So I went to apply this as well. The only thing that I was worried about was prevention of goalkeeper distribution. Because we're already using a split ball, there's no there's not a lot of necessity to use uh, the prevention of goalkeeper distribution because this against better teams, I'll probably remove it because there's no real point. Our first goal wasn't too bad because we were under a lot of pressure from Aston Villa, who were trying to press us in our half so that we could lose the ball. We didn't. We managed to keep the ball. Remember? The attacking width isn't wide anymore, so we are, players are a bit more closer together. This allowed us to work the ball back in the attacking transition, and Selena came in with a peach of a goal. Our second goal was followed soon after, and we finished this game winning this match 2-0. Against Norwich, it became a question of managing the flanks. Against the white 4-2-3-1, you have to keep an eye out on the fullbacks and the attacking wingers. In the next game, our strategy was basically correct. However, I made one critical mistake. With the score tied at 1-1 and Swansea down to 10 men, I decided to become more aggressive with the use of my team instructions. I even tried to draw them further out. In doing so, I left large gaps vulnerable to counter attacks. I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept the tactic the same way I was playing, using the opposition instructions, keeping control of the game, keeping it narrow, and trying to keep possession and wearing the opposition down. Instead, I decided to remove prevent shot goalkeeper distribution, play it wider, increase the spaces on the pitch, and that proved to be the difference between winning this match 3-2 and drawing the match 3-3. Our next match was going to be against Crystal Palace who don't really have a very fast attack. So I pushed my defensive line higher so that we could get our defenders to support the midfield a bit more effectively. This way, we could apply even more pressure on the opposition. We also applied the overlap so that the midfield will be a bit more compressed when we have the ball. We applied opposition instructions, um, namely pressing intensity on their fullbacks so that they would always be put under pressure in case they broke away and were able to get into our half. We did a pretty good job in this game. There was uh, by now pretty settled with the kind of system 
um, Swansea we're going to be using, keeping it narrow against more defensive systems. We could use the overlap against slower systems. We could push the defensive line a bit higher against systems that were stronger than us. Maybe we would as uh, opt not to use both overlaps, maybe only one, but we would always drop our defensive line slightly so that we would not be caught by attacks that were very fast. The common denominator in both systems was how we use OIs, pressing intensity on oppositional fullbacks. I don't like changing tactics too much if they're working. Sometimes all you need to do is make a slight change to team instructions, try and understand what they bring to the game. As you can see, if we just manage the team instructions alone, our results were pretty decent. We actually managed to get four clean sheets. There is one thing that you should take note of. Grimes has a tendency of picking up yellow cards, not because he's aggressive or too aggressive, but because he's playing alongside an inverted winger who probably won't help him out defensively because his tackling is five and his bravery is only six. This puts a bigger burden on your ball-winning midfielder to do a good job in midfield. And if he picks up a yellow card, there's a strong possibility your fullback will too. So under these kind of situations, what I would suggest is swapping the DLP for the ball-winning midfielder. Since both of them have dictates tempo, it shouldn't be too much of a loss in terms of your tactical familiarity. It might take a slight drop, but that's largely down to the fact that Ben is here is not accustomed to playing as a ball winning midfielder however he has the attributes to do the job tactically your team isn't very far team instructions can sometimes be overlooked as a simple tweak in your system without having to change too many roles and duties it can be a very effective way of managing your matches well i hope you enjoyed this edition of game changer if you have any questions please look for me on twitter at bustanet or addicted to fm.com my website once again i stream three times a week on twitch Make sure to follow me on Twitch so you can take part in the creation of some of these shows in the future. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.